Good evening, everybody. Welcome to your Inner Circle session for tonight. I hope you're all well. I hope you've had a great Wednesday so far. And I'm so delighted that you've taken the choice to join in the trail stop party for tonight. What we're looking for in this session is to take it to the next level again. Give us some ideas that really aren't mainstream to master exits and particularly trails. And remember, we've already covered the basics. The videos are up on YouTube. You may have got recordings. If you didn't, I'm going to put my email address. Uh, so you can just drop me a line and I'll ping you the recordings or the YouTube links for the edited versions of this. So you can revise them. As always, do your own due diligence on anything you see here. Make sure you follow trading plans. And of course, make sure that you manage risk on every trading action. So previously, we the first session, we sort of looked at the concept of trading stocks and reducing the amount we give it back to markets. When we have profitable trades and provided guidance on this, we talked about price EMA crosses as a good approach, the signal line and the MACD, key levels, pivots, support resistance. Uh, we talked about partial close with the trail included. And then we had another one in the second session, which is parabolic, parabolic SAR, and covered the concept of using multiple ones of these to do that for example if we i'll show you what that looks like in practice uh, so this is our range ea and we're sorry exits on this are a partial close uh, a time exit which we're going to talk about later uh, the last bar exit which we're going to talk about later there, there's our ma cross and then of course our take profit and atr so you can use a multiples of these together this actually uses them all uh this is the output on this on point on point one contract 1100 one of a contract which is so that's just trading those criteria picking uh we've got multiple exits chosen on this one but i want to show you something for real we put on specifications for nasdaq just to let you know for just so it's a 57 a lot so we're, this is a five dollar 70 trade every time so we're investing point one i think it's point one on this let's just check yeah point two okay so about 30 dollars a trade and that generates in two years, that's generated $1,100. Uh, so this is in full just the moment. It's actually one of the ones that's doing okay. Uh, but you can see there multiple exits. So we can use these, uh, we can use these together. And of course, this is a good way, a really good way of seeing what may or may not work. I'll come back to this maybe towards the back end of the session, but um, that's essentially what I mean by multiple trades. Um, but what we talked about in that first session and expanded on is that is that often what we get is a what we call a high velocity move if we look at so this is a high what we call a high velocity move so if we were using a trail stop with the 20 ema here then at various points during the life of that the distance between where current price is and that trail is significant um, so in this case, let's say we entered on this candle here. Uh, the gap between the uh, the gap between there and there is 205 points. Yep. Uh, and if we put on an ATR, uh, we can see the ATR here is 25 points. Okay, that's because it's doing this. Even at that stage it was a 78 so that's well over 280 r so that gap is possibly too big so we might look to tighten that up or we'll take it down to a previous time frame um that's just there's the same move uh, so what we might do is tighten it up or tighten it up in terms of going down to a 10 or looking at the 20 so we'll be out here locking in all that profit just in case it did this um so that's what we talked about high velocity moves uh, based on either uh, the distance between high point and a high point and, and moving average so altering the trail to tighten it up if we need to so we don't give too much um likewise with this let's just change the color of that so you can see this a little better let's make it blue no it's not very good blue is it let's make it a darker blue and let's make it fun there we go so you can see here if we use the 20 ema we don't want to give all this back at this stage so we might tighten this up uh what we end up doing is we end up giving back 
this anyway. We're always going to give some back with the trail, but we want to limit that. If we look on the hourly chart, and look at another example here. Again, if we use the 20 EMA, we're giving back this amount here. Uh, so the high velocity move on this is this point here. So what we, you can see there, the distance between here and here is big. So what we might do here is we might, on the particular trigger, we might make our trailer 10. And so we're out on this candle, not this candle, which locks us in uh, around about around about another 28 pips that would otherwise give back to the market okay so that's what we talked about in session two again you can review that if you'd like to um so the two approaches we talked about were tightening the trail uh through uh through moving or, or, or reducing the period of the moving average trail or keeping the same price ma uh, period but decreasing the time frame so for example from hourly to 30 minute uh, and we discussed two potential triggers that of a volatility based approach so that gap between current price and the ma so if it exceeds for example two times risk level or two atr then we may use that as a trigger or we could use a volatility based approach we talked about crossover of atrs so that's what we covered previously in the previous two sessions and as i said if you want to review those the recordings are there just pop me a little email in the email address i've given in chat if it's not still there it means you were probably a little uh delayed but i'll put it in anyway again uh if you want those recordings if you can get a copy of them right now on to the new stuff so my mission for the ea group uh the, the ea program uh, that we have uh running uh and generally speaking is we know we absolutely know without a shadow of a doubt entries are easy it's exits which matter okay and even uh, uh so let's just remind ourselves of the task in front of us the challenge is to always uh have a trail tight enough to lock in profit uh to lock profit in whilst loose enough to be avoid to be taken out by noise we don't want to be taken out by small market moves. so we don't want a three ema for example usually uh, but neither do we want to give back a lot and what's the extent of that where it's it's significant um so what we're doing here essentially is is we're looking at approaches which manage profit risk i.e the amount we give back to the market whilst avoiding opportunity risk i.e leaving a potential great trade or taking a great trade off the table now we can we can also look at this as it's a psychological as well as a capital battle so it's not only to do with the money but it's also to do with comfort it's also to do with that fear of missing out versus loss aversion uh, one both of which are cognitive biases which have covered well before uh, but um, there are ways to overcome both of these loss aversion is all to do with having a, a system that you're believing so you're quite happy for it to run through fomo is all to do with well it's okay if it continues to go up uh once i exit um because it might create another opportunity for example uh if we uh if we chose to get out here through one of the approaches i'm going to talk about later uh, so we entered a short trade on this reversal here we took it all the way down to here got out here uh we're now waiting i mean it could have gone down there it could do to now go right the way down there uh but we could we've always got a key line in the sun there and a strategy to trade that reach this is a nice zigzag that's been created here or a nice pivot low it reaches that pivot lower and again so just because you get out of a trade it doesn't mean that that's it for that particular asset class or even that particular time frame you just have to have the next strategy in your toolbox to be able to trade the next move and get over uh oh my god it might go up or in this case down even more um that's what FOMO is about so it's both of these are easy to manage but you've got to do it you've got to put the right things in place to make it easy but this even with multiple exits okay i'm going to show you something here so this is something that i'm going to go into big lots of detail with the ea group tomorrow 
but just to show you the extent of the percentage of give back uh, so this essentially is ea trades that have been taken since beginning of july focus on the profit ones as you can see here there's the profit loss of each individual trade but this what i've got done is what the maximum high of that particular trade was and what the maximum low was this is invaluable information for a number of reasons um but primarily it's to do to see how much we're actually giving back so if we put a new intervention in or a new um uh a, a new exit trail such as one of the ones we're going to talk about tonight does it impact positively on the percentage of give back now a lot of these are within very very acceptable ranges uh 20 percent so and 20 to 30 percent is really acceptable and a lot of them are in that place uh but then if we just scroll down a little bit some of them aren't okay so we're seeing a 65 percent give back here we're seeing a 55 percent give back here uh we're seeing a 60 percent give back here that to me feels like too much so what this is telling us is that um is that in some cases uh, some of the asset classes we are trading uh, we could do better than that uh, potentially uh, and it could be quite a difference so i mean if we look at this um if we look at this one here which is one of the older ones this has since been superseded by a new version um but if we look at this ea here it did get up to uh it did get up to 163 dollars and we actually closed this for just under 70. okay so now we can look at the at the uh at the exits on this ea related to that magic number and say well look what are those exits doing is this a regular thing and then subsequently we can uh, put um things in to to manage that um let me just obviously you wouldn't do it on the basis of one trade but this is what we're trying to do and this rather clever script has given us an extra layer of information which in many ways is reassuring in terms of 14 percent five percent three percent eight percent eighteen percent it's all good stuff uh but there is enough there to say hey look there could be an issue with this or is it just a reflection of the volatility of the instrument hence we need to do things like that adjustable trail and we've already got a program working on that as a concept which actually might be ready to them very excited but i just thought i'd put that up just to it we need some science behind this we can't do it on whim we need to measure what we're doing uh, we've got a really nice baseline we can get a really nice baseline from seeing how um, various exits work and switching them on and off in terms of where the uh whether something is is best on its own or whether something's best with multiple and whichever is triggered first is the right one to trigger so we can then subsequently what we're doing here the other thing we're doing here i'm going to, again i'm going to talk for you guys who are doing the ea course i'm going to talk about this in more detail most of these you'll see at ea but what we're trying to do is we're trying to put a script into the ea itself which says what the actual close was so was it take profit was it stop loss was it a trail if it was a trail was it an ma was it a, a partial close was it a, a and again we can start to look at well for those that were trail stops which is the best uh, which is the best to um the best way to manage that and you can see this is not an over an insignificant number of trades there's 421 trades in there so i hope that's interesting you so as i said the uh, group will get more a lot more but i wanted to stress that this is about two things first of all i'm gonna nail this okay I, what i want for you guys whether ea or discretionary trading what i want for you guys is to come up with solutions that are real that are based on science that are based on real numbers that give you the best chance of doing okay and there is no way that that a single trail or a we don't know which is better the, all of the methods that we've discussed so far there's no one out there that can categorically tell you this is the best one we need to do that we need to explore it we need to examine it we need to pull it apart we need to put it back together again and we need to provide evidence because if we have strong evidence for what we're doing our belief in our trading plan if we're discretionary trading raises infinitely 
what that means is that we're more likely to trade it accordingly. Does that make sense? Give me a yes if that sort of makes sense. If you really believe in your plan, you're less likely to stray from it. You're more more likely to um, uh, lots of yeses. You're more likely to follow it. You're more likely to get over. Oh my God, it's it, it might give it all back now, or or it could go higher. You're more likely to say it's okay because I've got something that is based on great evidence and we know because we measured it and it's really hard to do that as a discretionary trader um it's been a real wake-up call for me in the last sort of two or three years to to start to look beyond that and start to look at some automation not just in terms of actual trading but in terms of actual measurement of what happens and what doesn't happen because if you think about this if you're if you were to trade uh, look at how much you trade per week at this stage uh, and then look at how many trades we would need to have a critical mass to make a decision on well that's valid or that's not valid so that's why that's why we're taking this approach that's why i'm not giving up on this that's why i'm going to make sure that we absolutely smash this out of the ballpark okay uea guys uh, you hang on hang on in there we're going to do some great stuff over the next few weeks um so today we've looked at variable stops with lagging indicators so if we look at the look at the ma it's a lagging indicator if we look at um if we look at the matt d it's a lagging indicator if we look at now does that mean it's bad no I mean, does that mean it's better than having nothing absolutely but does it mean we could do better well potentially because of course we our entries are based on price action to get in so it makes sense to be consistent with the way we get in in terms of looking at ways we can potentially use price action to get out and it doesn't have to be a line in the chart if we have to check every handle to say well look we need to raise our stop because the ma's move it's not even to looking at, at, a, at a chart and saying well look that candle looks as though it's it, it could be the start of a reversal or a retracement so if we were to take this to the next level which is what we're going to try and do and what i'm going to discuss with you today then there's two things i thought well first of all we could look at approaches which are based solely on price action and volume the two things that are absolute and live and you and aren't lagging in any way okay or we can also look at approaches based on anticipated significant changes in price action and, and or volume and there's a few things that we know, not least the, uh, obviously a prime example would be the US interest rate decision tonight, particularly when the uh, when the outcome is uncertain. There is no doubt, you've seen that from some of the live sessions that we do when the CPI data released and all that sort of stuff, how significant those market moves can be. And it's one of the reasons why that um, price to uh, reducing the MA um, subsequent to a price move is a really good idea because that often happens uh when events happen and you get a fairly a fairly although it's lagging you get a fairly quick um a fairly quick response in terms of changes in volatility at different atr levels so we're going to look at these in a little more detail today so price action trails so the first one, which is a fairly obvious one, just, uh, um, is, is retracement trails. Okay, so these are fractals, zigzags, swing lows, or swing highs. Now, let me just show you what I mean here. Let's find another, uh, just a loose, let's, let's look at our Euro Canadian. So let's say we traded this reversal here. Uh, first place we place a stop would be here. Uh, oh, let's make it red okay obvious place to put it that's the uh that's the previous lower low um so we're in on this candle here maybe which is the close above this level here and it's a, uh it's an increase in vol increase volume candle. you can see the candles going there so tick 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 uh we're, and it's in the top third so we're in on this candle here and subsequently we trail up 
so I subsequently move up. Now, every time there's a trend pause, we get a pullback. So our first retracement point might be this. So that's a new higher low. It's a really simple concept. Trend is an is higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, and higher high. Every time there's a pause, there's a new higher high created. It's a really simple concept, but it's really important. So this is potentially a higher low. Okay. So it's not breached that. It's tested it a couple of times, but then it's continued on. So this trend pause is good. So off we go again. Uh, then we get this price action here. So we could say, well, look, uh, there's a higher low. Okay. And then we get this pause here. Uh, and there's our higher low. And then we get this price action here uh, before this. And there's a new higher low. And ultimately, what that does is it takes us out. If this was the way we trailed, this would be the way, uh, this would be the point at which we get out. And of course, as I said before, if you're smart, you're ready to go on this one for the next round. Okay. So that was just a random Euro Canadian dollar, not pre prepared, but you can see how that works. And compared to our 20 EMA, it would give us uh, probably about the same exit as that. Um, probably slightly lower if we used a 10 EMA and we'd uh, we started to use the 10 at this stage um, probably at that point there when there was more than twice the risk level associated with it so we can use a combination of those two to get the best outcome yeah, let's look at another chart uh, let's look at let's look at calls since that's the chart that's here Okay, so we'll, we'll get in here on the basis of this trend continuation. Okay, we'll probably put a stop here based on that lower, that uh, last higher low. Then we'll get the retracement, the continuation. So we put it there. We'd want to close below that. That's the low and low. Have some retracement there, so we might sort of move it up to, up to there. We we'll get another pause here. So when it moves higher, we might move it up again. And obviously, Coles isn't a very active or isn't a very volatile stock. At this point here, we've got a higher long, so move into there. Uh, and then at this point, we're doing okay. Um, so at this point here, we've now locked in through that mechanism. We've now locked in there. If we use the 20, 20 MA, we would be out of this already. Now, in both situations, we'll be doing okay. In both situations, uh, we've already locked in nearly 5%. Okay. But that I wanted to show you on stock on a daily chart, one that you guys picked, not me, uh, just to show you the concept. So that's the idea. Now, there's a couple of ways we can action this. Uh, we can just simply use that and cite it. If we wanted to program this in, for example, for an EA, it would be slightly more complex uh, because what we've got to do is find something that picks those. Uh, let's look at this short trade. Uh, let's say we're to enter on this candle here. Okay, so one. One way we could do this is through the use. What we're wanting is a system that that um, shows us. So let's just use fractals as an example. It's a good example. Okay, so I hope you can see those gray. I should have made those a different color, actually. Let me just make them slightly more standouty. Make them slightly fatter. There we go. Okay, so let's say we're to enter here. What we would do is we'd use the last fractal low because what a fractal is is it involves two. If it's a fractal low, which we're looking at because this is a short trade, we're looking two here and two here. Okay, so the previous two candles to the low has got to be above, and the next two candles have got to be above as well. That creates a fractal low, and away we go. So what we do is remember with a downtrend we're looking for lower highs that's the retracement we're looking for so there's a lower high being created here so we move our stop down to here still going down we'd move our stop down to here uh still sort of going down would um it's not been triggered there it's not closed above that so we'd move our stop down to here and this one uh and move our stop down to there there's our new fractal high and then we'd be out 
as it's above that. So that would be another way. And that's based on price action. It's based on a swing lows career. The logic of a fractal is it's based on two. It's based on an, a swing high with two below um, on either side of that swing high candle. So that is a price action exit. It's just one way of describing a uh, one way of describing that. So that could be a way we trail is by using fractal highs, and that would have worked quite well on that particular short trade, as you can see from the example that we gave. So that's what we mean by a retracement uh, retracement trail, um, and that is easy to program. For an EA, uh, I'm not sure fractal will be the way I'd like to go, but it is one. Um, if there's another way of describing swing low, uh, but you can see if we, if it's sorry swing high. Um, if you're going short, you're looking for the last swing high. If you're going long, you're looking for the last swing low as your retracement levels. Um, and it, this is why we use that. This is why this is a good idea. Okay, I'm going to whiz this up a little bit. I'm going to draw. And I know this is always scary when I start to draw, but let's give it a will. Okay, so. Okay, so let's look at this. So there's our move higher and our move lower. <clears throat> so if it breaches this level here, after hitting this low, after this high here, so it creates a new, uh, it goes downwards and then it comes back up again. So what does that create? What pattern is that? Okay, so it comes down here, goes up to that point, comes down here, goes up to that point. What is that that we're seeing here? Absolutely a double bottom. So what, what we're doing by using a retracement level is we are um, anticipating that if it does if it does breach the last swing high, then it essentially a double bottom has been created. Okay, let's look at another example. Uh, let's look at the New Zealand Gen. Slap that on. Let's see if we can find an example here. Okay, so uh, let's erase the drawings. Okay, so. Here we go. So we've moved up here. That's our one there. If we come down here and go back up here, what happens if it breaches this one here? What's that created? Double top. So it's a really simple concept. It's based on price action. It's based on looking at our last, uh, our last sort of swing high or, pit or fractal high in this case. And our fractal low, if it breaches that fractal low, it's created a double top, absolutely. A reversal. So what we're doing is we're anticipating that if this last uh, swing low, because we look at the swing lows when we're going long, if our last swing low is, our last retracement is breached, it doesn't matter whether you're using fractals or, or, or not, we can cite this. We don't need the fractals there, but we can tell fairly easily that that's a double top. In the same way that now, if we're still in this trade, if this comes down and it creates a new, remember, it's all about higher lows. If this creates a low, which or breaches that higher low, the trend is over. It's over. And we've got a double top, we're ready to go short. And of course, we're ready to exit that position. Right, I hope that sort of made sense in terms of the why, the logic behind uh, the logic behind what I'm saying and why a retracement uh, trail is not a bad idea. Uh, okay, so unless it's automated, the intervention would be manual. You'd have to look at it on every candle and say, or oh, set an alarm because you can do that on MT5. You can set an alarm, set a notification, which will say, uh oh, this is reaching this level. Now, of course, if you're awake, that's great. If you're not awake, uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, so you've got to bear that in mind, of course. Um, then, of course, we've got specified reversal patterns, which we've talked about before. We've had sessions on reversal patterns. 
three rub three bar reversals uh hooks pipes four bar reversals whatever one but the bottom line is unless you i mean first of all you've got to systemize that and you you've got to say within your training plan these are the ones that i'm using and you've got to know them and you've got to be there to observe them or um you can do something if we look at any if we look at any reversal pattern it's essentially based on the fact that something has hit a six bar five or six bar low okay so if we it doesn't mean you're going to get taken out sometimes early on this so if we look if we look at this range that we breached out with copper we know this and we see this breakout we know this breakout's done because this one says this one here says this is the highest in one two three four five six bars in terms of this one two three four five six bars okay so that that point may may well be this one here may well be where you get out if we're looking at this high this is the um this high is still the highest in uh or this is the lowest in one two three uh one two three four if you include that one that's not reversed so that would be premature to get out that based on that as a concept um let's look at something else let's look at bitcoin and an hourly chart uh here's the reversal so this is the lowest bar this is the lowest bar here so if you were in this long you weren't out of it already which you should be because of the uh, distance between high and 20 ema so let's say we're in this long at that stage you could use your 10 ema it's a good example of, of moving a 20 to a 10 when that gap is too big so you'd be out here uh, if you weren't out there then you would say this is the lowest bar in one two three four five if you if your plan was six then it would be this bar you'd be out one two three four five six it's the lowest closing six bars so whichever reversal pattern you're talking about invariably that covers it whatever asset class you're looking at uh, so if we look at this double bottom we see here oh sorry look at this three bar reversal here uh this is the lowest close in six so we'll be out on that one okay for long here we'll be out on that one if we use that as a concept again price action orientated consistent with the idea of price action and price action out um and is still a trail because what you're saying with the trail is i don't think this is going to go up anymore if you're long i don't think this is going to go down anymore for short if you use a three bar it's a good it's a good example of using a three bar if you use the three bar you'll be taken out so many times it'd be ridiculous any market noise would would take you out so that's an example of making sure that it's a level which is okay in terms of identifying a potential reversal, but not too tight that it gets chopped out on every little market blip. So of course, other considerations you've got if you're trading using this for EA development, then it's it'll work whether you're asleep or not asleep. If you're using this for, from a discretionary point of view, you're gonna make a decision of what you do when you go to bed. Um, do you just put in your latest thing and, and wake up in the morning and see what happens or do you use a system trial you've got to make a decision as to whether it's a touch or close uh, if it's a touch it would be placing it actually onto the system so if we placed a trail stop for example on uh, so if we had a trail stop uh, which was the 20 EMA uh so that would be set on the system we'd alter our system and stop uh and as soon as it touched that would be out uh we can't do uh we can't do an on close um automatically we've got to actually manually say well look it's closed beneath then we're out generally speaking close is better than touch in many situations uh and is it the same time frame um there is merit for looking at these price action a price action trail on a on a smaller time frame um that's probably something we would look at another time now on top of that we've got other potential experimental approaches now these are the ones which i think make a really logical to have a look at but i can't categorically say that hey look this is likely to work 
So I've got five I'm going to look at. Uh, so time of day, trading stop adjustments. Um, so there are low volatility periods in the day and there are high volatility periods in the day. The low probability periods in the day are the Asian market maybe for FX. Uh, and then we, as European markets open, the European data starts to come out. And again, when the US data starts to come out, we'll get an increase in volatility. So what we can do is we can work with what I call market breadth and alter our stops according to where we are during the day. If we look at this, I'll just show you this in action. Uh, let's put it on a 30 minute chart. Um, let's make it a little more, a little more exciting than Okay, so uh, generally speaking, this period in the day, so every time a new market opens, we get a an exciting sort of time. So this is US open, this is European open, this is Asian open, or Asians waking up. Okay, you'll see the time of highest volatility is invariably when the US session opens, but you can see throughout the day, it increases soft in asia more volatile in the us sorry in european uh, maximum volatility usually in the uh in the us session now it's going to be mirrored we we'll look at the usd we'll look at the usd here so we can anticipate that volatility is going to increase at these particular times so we can probably set it no uh, don't saving time who our lowest volatility is usually uh after that initial open of the asian session so if we were to trail based on this we're likely to get chopped out at this stage okay because volatility at that point if we were to use a three a four pip atr on that we'll get just chopped out too easily okay if we're using that as a as a trail mechanism in any way shape or form um and vice versa of course so we've got to make a decision as to whether we increase our or um quite happy for a gap to increase during these times of higher volatility on european and us open and maybe tighten our stops up during the lower volatility volatility periods which are invariably at the back end of the asian session and the back end of the us session the back end of the us session sometimes not a lot of movement going on so we could look to altering a trail based on the market breadth in terms of li market liquidity at any point in terms in, in the time of day we can use volume weighted trading stops if we look at um if we look at the price action um then what we can do is we can say right okay when volume's peaked then we need to start trailing our stops so if we look at again the euro usd here look at our, our times of volume peaks which is obviously around market time so if we look at our times of volume peaks let's say we to trade the short there's our volume peak so we might decide right okay um now we need to adjust it that volume peak is done we're now getting drop in volume that's likely to result in a change in direction uh subsequently we can alter our trail accordingly Uh, so we might tighten our tighten our stop as volume increases um, to make sure that we lock in some stuff. Um, Time-based dynamic trailing stops are another um, another possibility. Um, this is based on the concept that prices uh, subsequent to a trend change, the most uh, usually uh, the most profitable part of the trade is near the beginning of that earlier in the trade so what we can do in that case uh, let's stick on I want to keep on I'm not even doing these on the same charts because I want you to see that it's real and not me just pulling things out my backside okay so you can invariably see here that the best part of the trade uh, if we look at this breakout trade here, the best part of the trade is this bit here. 
okay if we look uh let's even put it on four hour chart let's vary the time frame of it if we look at this the best part of the trade is when we've got confirmation so on a four hour chart there's our sort of double bottomy type of thing although it comes down and retests that's the best part of the trade okay if we look for this breakout that's the best part of the trade we look at this reversal that's the best part of the trade and then we start to pause for a significant that was about a day's pause there on this four hour chart um if we look at a five minute chart let's just look at gold let's look at a five minute chart again uh, if we look at this breakout here, the best part of the trade is that early part of the trade. That's when everybody piles in. Oh, we've seen this on our chart. Away we go. If we look at the Euro USD on a 15 minute, again, you can see there's the double bottom on this. Best part of the trade is those first few bars or that first few, we could say the first hour with, with a 15 minute chart. If we look here, first hour first hour first hour whenever there's a breakout is usually the best part of the trade does that make sense so that's what we do as time progresses early in the trade we use a wide stop but as time progresses we tighten that stop periodically so we might say after the first hour we're halving our trail after the next hour we're halving that trail again after the next hour we're halving that trail again so what you're doing is you're taking advantage of the of the potential that the first part of the trade is the best there may be a time where it pauses or you may say look at this trend continuation i'm happy not to okay so similar variation to that is number of bars so you could say uh look if you were doing a 15 minute bar um the i the bet the, the reason bars is possibly preferable is that um it's not time frame dependent so because obviously you wouldn't um you wouldn't trade that concept of after the first hour i'd increase it if you were trading an hourly chart or even a 30 minute chart it might work on a 15 minute chart but what you might say is is the first is the first four bars so it might be that you see time and time again and that's what we can do with measuring this sort of stuff no reason why we can't rather than peel highest why we can't put where it was after four bars um so we can say if we look at uh, this then if it's four bars on this 15 minute chart there's our entry arguably one two three four out uh, if we look at a four hourly key a uh, four hourly here uh sorry uh one two three four uh, and then our trail is tightened so let's say that's our trail one, two, three, four, we tighten our trail, possibly to our break even. Uh, so now we are uh, now we're 58 points. One, two, three, four. We may go to 25 points at that stage. I'm guessing it's probably about there. yeah about 25 points let's say 20 points you get the idea anyway so as the number of bars clocks by then we start to uh then we trail according to that based on this concept that the first part of the trend is usually the best that's not all um news event news event triggered trailing stops so there's a couple of ways we can do this um so we're dynamically and we're actually looking uh, to include this in one of the eas on many of the EAs actually, um, when an event is coming up, you've got always a choice. You either take the position off the table or you tighten a trail. Those are the two appropriate um, appropriate actions because we don't know which how the market, A, what the data is going to be and B, how the market's going to respond to it. So that's the time when we can give back significant amounts of cash. Uh, if the event isn't good, uh, and then it subsequently moves against us it's going to be really fast it's going to be really brutal uh, and so tightening a stop or exiting the position beforehand makes a lot of sense the, the other thing so that would be the primary way you would may do that um, 
So you can pick your news events, and that's what I mean by a news-based filter. Um, that's possible with an EA, though it's causing us a, a slight a slight little bit of angst. I just bear in mind with this, there's likely to be some slippage during the immediate post-event period. Uh, do we rewiden the stop? Uh, so let's say we've tightened the stop prior to it, and do we rewiden or do we just keep it where it is? Um, is, a, is a question I don't know the answer to. Um, the other thing we could do is we could use just, which isn't price action orientated, but just was something I thought of uh, in terms of a trail. Uh, so we know that, um, uh, let's do an hourly chart. If we just put an RSI on this, Okay, so generally speaking, something's overbought. When something's overbought, invariably at some stage soon it's going to be tipping over. So do how do we automatically use an oversold or an overbought situation on something like the RSI? Uh, we could even tighten this up. So rather than a 14, we could do a six, for example, and say, right, okay, if it's in an overbought situation. So at this point, this would be our trigger to move from a 20 to a 10, for example. Uh, in this situation, 20 to a 10, for example. So if it's oversold, we tighten. If it's overbought, we tighten, depending on the direction of trade. I think that's worth a little bit of a look at. As I said, I probably wouldn't use a 14. I think, don't think it's sensitive enough. But it's one thing worth looking at. So of those, what do you think, guys? Um, isn't that cool? Uh, so what we can do, yeah, but as I said, what's difficult with that is um, is the time it takes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you something. Let me change these a little bit. Uh, We're not going to use a time exit. We might use a time exit, make it earlier. And is there a partial goes on this one? There isn't. Okay, so what I've done is I've ticked all these exits. And what we can do is we can get the. Uh, so we're, we're maybe or maybe not using last bars at six. We may or may not be using a, an MA touch. On 25, we may or may not be using an exit filter on based on time. Uh, but we're still using a take profit and a stop loss. Okay, so we've still got those uh, in place. So now to do that, to look at every chart and decide which one is the best, what we can do with this, if you're not familiar with the A's, is get it to do the work for us. We can even uh, decide whether touch or close is better. Let's do that. Let's take that as well. So it's going to test all of these. I just want to make sure that, yeah. And it's not going to take very long. And it's going to test them since July 2022 to current on exactly that thing I showed you before. Okay, so from this, same number of trades, the best result, there isn't much change in result. I'm a bit disappointed about that, to be honest. Uh, so it could be a number of factors. Uh, let's use a different, let's use a different one. Let's make it a bit more exciting. Because I think this is focused on such a small time frame. This is the US session only. All right, let's open it up. That's when you know you've got a good EA and that alterations in function don't alter it much. So uh, I'm going to open it up. This is to see the trade time is, is just the US session. So I'm going to open this up to the whole day. And phew, there we go. And we'll do it again. Hopefully that's going to mean we can see some differences. Whoa, it's really made a massive difference, actually. So by altering the time of day, 
a the best result is this one you can see how much that's dropped that's horrendous Maybe we shouldn't have done. Maybe we shouldn't have done it on an existing one that's been hyper optimized already. Let's try it on different uh, orders. Is is the best combination? Let's do. Or it tells us that one uh, is dominating. Okay, we don't want that. Maybe I shouldn't move that moving average away. Okay, let's do close. And we're going to make this really tight. Going to make it a no. 18's all right. Make a time exit true or false. Okay, so we've got a time exit. We've got a last bar's exit, but we've got multiple options for our last bar exit. So we're going to see which is the best exit out of all of these. So 112 different combinations over the last two years is checking. Okay, so that's what it's done. So how long has that taken to check all those variations? You can see. They're all positive, which again is a good thing. Uh, let's look at for, so there's a couple of things we can look at our maximum profit, which is 1419. Bit of a bit high drawdown there. Uh, we obviously don't want to trade on Mondays. Uh, it's best if we use that outcome. It doesn't make a difference whether we use the closed time filter. It works best on the last, as soon as we start messing around with our last bars it tells us the best last bar setting is that eight you remember we did that six last bars it tells us that eight is best for this and a close is way way better than open uh oh sorry than touch if we go down here we'll see all the touches okay so that's our ma uh our ma touch and we can even get more intricate than that we can start to test individual uh so we know last bar is going to make that eight so no, that works, but we can even sort of say, right, which is the best MA? So we're still gonna check touch and we're gonna go up to 24 on this. Don't need to find out if it trades on Monday or not. We know that's false. Um, we're gonna we use a closed bar since entry, okay? So this is gonna close down after uh, X number of bars, okay? Remember that we've talked about that time exit or. Uh, uh, or bar exit so it's been up the first hour it's the first four bars we talked about so let's let's do the four uh, and let's do up to 16. and what i'm showing you this for is um is how things can be combined so what we're not looking for is one trail that encompasses all but there's a possibility that a combination will be better uh, than just one single approach Let's see what we're cooking here. So you can see quite categorically that close looks as though it's better than touch. Uh, you can see that bars in century. Uh, so this is a close if it's been 14 bars, that appears to be better than the lower ones. Because we've organized it by profit. And you can see having the close time filter generally looks as though it's probably slightly better, though it's not. And we can see that 18 is probably the best setting. Now, uh, of course, we can look to this is our risk. So we want to reduce our risk. We might do it, we might give up a couple of hundred bucks. But let's not. Let's just do that. Let it run, let it run. So that has taken to get that answer on that particular asset on that particular time frame, it's taken what? Well, that's about a minute and 25 seconds. Okay. And we got a fairly clear guide in terms of what's the best from a a risk point of view and what's the best from a profit point of view okay so what we're going to do is we're going to plant our flag somewhere in the middle no we're not we're going to just go for gold okay and we can see what the equity curve would be on that one so over this is what it does which ain't bad hey eh? so there we go there's our result and we've got what can create that result uh, all clear in terms of finding quick ways to find the answers that we need to create a system now so what we've got whichever route we do uh, and i'll 
there's another reason I've shown you that, not only to demonstrate that possibly a combination is good, but there's another reason because I had a little bit of an inspirational thingy. Uh, for those of you who want to look at this in a bit more detail and shortcut a heap of things. Um, so if we look at our potential system, we still need a trigger. So what is going to be the price action or indicator? What we're going to do and how we're going to do it? And then any, any variations, which would include things like when I go to sleep, I'm going to do this. Or when there's a shortened day, I'm going to do this. Or when there's an event coming up, I'm going to do this. Uh, you must not, as a general rule, you don't go back. The price action doesn't go your, your way after taking action. And it must do is a test. So that's our third uh, that's our third session there. Uh, I hope that's been useful. And of course, it's about testing the approach discussed. Uh, I'll make this recording available on YouTube. Pop me an email, all that sort of stuff, and whichever way you choose should be written in your plan. So just looking through questions here. I think we've answered them all as we've gone. So I hope that's good. Trade safe and see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.